Hi everyone, it is Nat from Studio Hacks and today I'm answering the internet's questions about GarageBand and uh, this one is similar to another video I did recently but uh, slightly different. Um, GarageBand, how to change the tempo of a loop? Very good question. Now that's uh, usually the instance where you've been building a track up using the loops in GarageBand and then you've tried to bring in a loop from a third party uh, like splice.com or from a uh, big library of loops um, so like i have here i have a bunch of loops uh, that i've just collected over the years so let me just quickly uh, go through uh, here when you open the library you got the blue ones they are audio loops that have tempo information already pre programmed into them so if I drag one in let's find a beat here we are so if I drag it into a blank space it'll create an audio track but uh, because that's the first loop I brought into the session it is actually conformed the entire session to the beats per minute of that loop but I can change that quite happily speed it up and that loop will play faster great now we've got the um, green loops which are MIDI loops if you drive that in and it'll make a MIDI region and you can see there if I double click on that it brings up the piano roll with the MIDI notes which you can drag and alter quite easily and then the third kind of loop that you'll find here are the drum, um, the drummer loops, which are the gold. The gold ones there, and that will load up this drummer here, which is like a drum, uh, drum creation program, makes different loops, and you can alter the different parameters uh, so that you have the three types of loops. And I'll just drag those out. Now, the problem occurs when you go and you want to start using loops outside of this Apple Loops library. So, um, you know, you may have some a bunch of loops. You've got something that goes really well with the track, but unfortunately, it's at 90 beats per minute. Let's have a listen to some of these. And then when you drag that in, what happens? What happens? Let's play it. Totally out of time. So I'm going to delete that. Um, now what I'm going to show you how to do is to grab that loop and to make it a permanent part of your Apple loops with the tempo information embedded in it, just like these blue ones. So um, I'll quickly save what I was doing there. Call it project one how original start a new session and then I'm going to drag in this current loop and I know it's 90 beats per minute if you don't know the beats per minute of your loop you can uh, happily figure it out by trying to match it with a session tempo and listening to it with that um, metronome on or you can use a beats per minute analyzer um, just um, search the internet for one of those so you can get programs that do it. Ableton Live does it as well. So what I'm going to do is hit Control Option G and that's going to convert that blue. So if I had it selected, all I hit, hit is Control Option G and then I want to double click on it and there's this track and region here. I want to hit the Enable Flex and under the region I want to make sure that, that Follow Tempo and Pitch is on and then you simply uh, drag it in to your Apple library just like that and you give it a name super funky oh uh, well you know sometimes I like Nat's loop funky drum one so now that loop that I had on a hard drive is now actually saved in on this computer as a loop so I can just close this uh, or open I can just open that song that I had before, I won't save it, I don't need to. And now, 
project one. Here we go. And now I should be able to find it in the Apple library. If I just type in Nat, uh, Nat's loop funky drums. And when I drag that in, you'll see it now conforms automatically to the beats per minute of this song. Let's have a listen. So that's how you do it. Very cool. You can build up your own little, um, you know, library of loops to use um, in here. And you can, if you label them a bit better, um, you can have them, you know, a bit more easily accessible as well. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial um, and that you make use of it. That's how you use the kind of similar style warping functionality that Ableton Live has or Flex Pitch, uh, Flex Audio rather, uh, in Pro Tools and, um, and Logic. So uh, we'll see you in the next video.